All right. Uh, welcome everybody to our artist talk with Shala Javid um, with Shoebox Projects. Um, Shala has a solo show online on our website. Uh, we all have a Wonder Woman inside us. I can't wait to hear what that title means and all about her solo show. Um, Shala, working with Shala, she has like this eclectic mix of you know, the type of art that she does. And so the series that she's done, you know, on female empowerment and much more is really exciting. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to feature her, you know, and give her this opportunity, you know, with Shoebox Projects, because it's such an important subject, you know, right now continuing. I mean, it's not, sadly, it's not going to change for a long time, but, uh, but we're really, really excited to have Shala with us. So welcome, Shala. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having this show for me. And uh, yeah, so um, I just, I, I am, as you know, um, some people may, may know, I am self-taught Persian artist, but a little about my background. I have been in English literature from National University of Iran, and I have a um, certificate of Lower Cambridge from England and also uh, associate degree from interior design. But my, my uh, most passion uh, was uh, always art. So, and then that I started myself, I took some uh, private uh, sessions from uh, old masters in Iran and also some workshops when I came here. I've been painting, um, I've been an artist for 25 years. And I've been, as you know, <laughs> you mentioned, I've been doing, eclectic paintings for uh, restaurants, uh, like Western restaurants and Mexican restaurants and murals for residentials and uh, paintings for, um, for uh, private uh, collectors. Um, so I raised the four uh, babies, uh, but my fifth baby is art. Mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm still but this baby I'm still raising it <laughs> it's not finished yet <laughs> and <Yeah>. always <laughs> yeah so maybe until I die at the end of the world I have I have to raise it <laughs> so but I'm so glad because the um, art is my I, I live by myself but I'm never um I'm never lonely. I'm most of the time alone, but um, I live with my children. These are my paintings or my friends and I communicate with them. So uh, I, I have a joy of communication with them. So um, also what a background about art, how it does to me in my, how it has done it to my private life. Art has uh, uh, taught me how to um, how to take life easy and how not to take it too serious and uh, mm -hmm. how uh, to be to come out of my comfort zone how uh, art actually connected me to my inner self and um, and showed me how not to take life uh, uh, not to uh, sweat for little stuff and uh, how to come out of my um, uh, how to be out of the box person, person and how to be a spiritual woman. Uh, so it, it just, I really appreciate it because art taught me all how to live. That's the greatest mm -hmm. accomplishment that I had. And when I started painting, uh, there's the energy between me and my, uh, my canvas and my uh, brushes that is just like a triangle energy that um, that creates a meditation mode for me. So I start painting and I don't hear anything. I don't feel hungry. I don't want to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just a meditation, maybe for a few hours. So that's what I learned from from painting, from art, and that's the the, the best thing happened to me. And uh, so that was my passion. But again. Um, as uh, Christine introduced to me uh, to be a narrative painting and what said, what's your passion? I said, well, my second passion is a, uh, women empowerment. So, uh, so we talked about it and I felt that I, 
I came up every night when I slept, I came up with a, with a scene that I put it on canvas. Uh, so as I mentioned, I'm from Persia, I'm from Iran, and I'm from, coming from a country that has a cultural bias uh, against the women uh, that strip their women freedom. So, and um, I always felt I'm a, I'm a free woman, but, uh, but still I had to, to gain it. I had to save myself. So uh, that's through intuition uh, and uh, that I'm showing on my paintings. I showed uh, myself that I, I could free myself from and relocate myself to a place that I feel that I'm more free and actually not even save myself, save my, my four boys and taught them how to respect women. Actually, they really believe, those my four boys, they believe in women empowerment. One of them's uh, actually, one of them's um, uh, um, girlfriend's family always tell him, we need to clone you to, to increase like you for our, our, other, our other daughters. So I'm so proud to hear that because I taught them how to, um, to respect their women and how to, uh, to develop their feminine side, not to be that macho and talking about, oh, we are, because I was taught always that, uh, well, listen to your man, your man knows the best and, and tells you what to do. Uh, but then I found out that, <laughs> no, no, he's not, I'm the smarter one. And so another thing that I want to talk about is that gender to me uh, doesn't uh, specify the, uh, the smartness. The smart, the, a lot of women are much more smarter. So, and that's what I found about women, my friends, myself, and that is, uh, the, so I, I really disagree if somebody says, uh, like men are, men might be macho, but women, some women are much more smarter. That's what my opinion is. Um, and um, uh, about, um, yeah, this is, and about all about, I think I, I wrote something that I didn't, I didn't want to forget about things, yeah. Um, the, these paintings that I did actually, this series of paintings are about achieving freedom, um, and achieving freedom and uh, uh, through inner self and spirituality. And also when I came here, I started studying a little bit about um, sexism and prejudice. And then I found out that not, I mean, of course, in mid Middle Eastern countries is, is really serious yes. a lot. There's no one dream that suits us all, I don't know. Hello? Go ahead, you're good, Shala. Okay, uh, there they are a lot worse in, in the Middle Eastern country, but it, it exists in, in um, Western countries too. So I related that uh, my uh, situation, um, uh, through the, uh, the to, through the, uh, the the the, the uh, black and white paintings that represent how women are always uh, more vulnerable everywhere in the world, and also I connected uh, connected them to Me Too movement. So um, that's what you might see that those uh, black and white paintings that how. Uh, women are abused, not in just in in my country or in Middle Eastern country, but everywhere in the world. And I'm really I have this passion that um, to to have a voice, talk about their freedom and their empowerment, uh, so they don't always uh, listen to somebody says, okay, list you are a woman, you have to talk to your man. Um, to do something, you you don't have, you shouldn't have an, any opinion about of yourself. So um, yeah, so I think that's about it. I wanted to talk. <laughs> There's going to be, I mean, as we go through, because um, I'll share the screen in just a couple of minutes, so we can actually look at some art. And I know, you know, we'll be talking a lot more about this. So thank you so much for sharing 
you know, all of this. I mean, it's already inspiring. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> well, you you, you know. inspired me so much because um, what you started about uh, your project about how you felt and you, you freely uh, showed yourself, showed and that's me and uh, uh, perceive me. And then I feel that that's my that's what's your passion that's my passion and i have to share it with the world with people at least that i um, i connect with it, you know i mean i do it for myself but also to help others and i think you do the same thing exactly definitely yeah um so before we get into looking at work i wanted to ask you know i know you said you're self-taught um, did you like start doing art as a kid and where did you, you know, how did you get supplies? Where did you, you know, did you have influences when you were a kid back in Iran? Uh, well, I feel always I had kind of, a, uh, kind of like a style for just seeing things differently and about the colors. And when I was eight years old, actually, we used to go to Europe because my brother lives in Heidelberg. He's a doctor. Um, we used to go every summer and from the time I was five years old. And when I was eight years old, we went to Paris and I saw those, um, those painters. Um, uh, they were on the Sacre Coeur on top. They were, they were uh, on the pavement and with their easels and asking, can I paint your daughter to asking my mom, for example, or other. And then I fell in love and I said, mom, could you get me an easel when we go back? And mom, <laughs> mom, was, mom was not that old fashioned. My dad was a flamboyant and my mom was an old fashioned. So um, passed away a long time ago. But when we went back to Tehran, he got, she got me an easel and canvas. I started painting myself. I started painting every day. And then he, she took me to a master of art uh, class and she couldn't drive. She was taking me to taxi. And she said, I'm, after three months, she said, I'm tired. I cannot take you anymore. So I started at that time, but I could draw and I could uh, do with the charcoals and everything. And then I left it because I had to go to university. Um, my subject matter was English literature. And then I had, I got married and I had four boys. So when I started in <laughs> mid crisis, I started feeling I have to start back to painting. That's what I took a one year class from a master of art in Iran that he is an old master and he's passed, but at the time, before I came to United States. So that's what I say I'm, uh, I'm self-taught because I never went to this uh, art school. I just uh, had like a teachers or a little bit here, a little bit there. And I, got, I took some uh, workshops here, artwork workshops here. Yeah. And now like tell everybody how often do you paint? And I know like, you know, I keep wanting you to share a photo on Instagram of like, you know, your space with all of your paintings stacked up <laughs> because you're very, very prolific. And uh, so yeah. how often do you paint? Yeah, I, I, to tell you the truth, uh, I used to paint every day. Now, sometimes I feel when I want to go on my canvas and I feel tired. I mean, especially when I do my regular things in the morning and then just do some errands and shopping and grocery shopping. And then I feel tired, but I, something inside me forces me that I have to start the next day. So usually I, I paint, I mean, right now, and as I mentioned, I live by myself. So I have, my friends are my paintings and my canvases, <laughs> I talk to them. So I usually paint every day. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna share my screen so we can actually look at your show. Okay. And um, let's see. So tell us about, you know, I mean, I know we came up with the title together, but the title is based on one of your paintings. Yes. Uh, tell, us about, tell us about all of your titles, because as we'll see, you know, your titles are all, they're very, they're long and they're poetic and they're, you know, they, they tell a story along with the art. So where did the titles of your work come from? Yeah, you know, when, when 
it, like a vision came to my mind at night that in the morning I want to put it on a canvas. Then the next day when I started painting for a little while I would I would research of the for the titles. I have a lot of titles on my phone and on the notes. I so I gathered them through um, like Rumi through some. Um, like spiritual guidance or spiritual uh, leaders. Um, I found them, um, I Googled them on women empowerment uh, co codes so I could find them. And that's what I, I, uh, I tried to, um, to connect uh, like uh, each painting with the right uh, title. And as you mentioned, some of them are too long, but I mean, to me that that would go with the with the painting yeah they're not too long at all no i think they're perfect yeah thank you you're welcome um so let, tell us about because you use different like media different styles and techniques in your work yeah uh, yeah tell us about you know that so uh, so uh, this actually, I, I've used, a, I mean, all kinds of uh, mediums. Uh, uh, I used to paint with oil for a long time. Then, then when, because I had my, my studio was uh, separate from my, the way, where, where I was living and then it would affect my lungs. So when I, when I didn't have this, that's a, then I started painting with acrylic, but also I paint with the charcoals, with the, um, with the different sticks, the oil sticks and everything. This one actually has done with, is done with the oil sticks and acrylic as well. Um, and then as you see also, I, I'm really into uh, birds and children and animals because I think all of them are so, so innocent. Um, they bring, uh, the, they make the painting uh, to the viewer that this, this is me I'm talking about, is innocence of me. Uh, please look at me, look at my innocence, you know? So. I love that. It's, you know, definitely, um, you know, there's so many different layers of meanings to your work. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So. You're welcome. So it's, I mean, uh, you know, also in your work, um, oh, of course my internet is going up, so there we go. In your work, um, you talk a lot about magic and fantasy and, you know, tell us about that aspect. Yeah, because, uh, you know, from the time that I, I was, uh, I had a severe depression when I was in Tehran and I didn't know what to do. I started meditating. My inner self uh, taught me that there is going to be shallow, there's going to be magic and miracle every day in your life if you see them, if you connect with your inner self. And um, what happened is just uh, anything. Uh, so even um, I remember now, um, it might be very too detailed or it's not too private, but it's too detailed when I started thinking of um, moving to America. Um, it was the time that uh, um, America and Iran, they were in a really worse state of uh, connection. Um, and when I got my, uh, when I got my visa, everybody, uh, I mean, they were just astonished. They couldn't believe that I got it. And I call it magic. I call it miracle. That's what I say every day if we, we are connected to our inner self, if we meditate, uh, everyday magic happens to our lives. So, uh, I mean, I, I, when I came here, um, I, from, the, from Iran, I had maybe 10, 12 goals. And to tell you guys the truth, I got 10 of them. It's not that I got them. I didn't sit on my butt and do, did nothing. I meditated and I believed in magic that is happening in my life, but I went out and, and came out of my, uh, my comfort zone and I welcomed all obstacles that happened to my life. The obstacle led, uh, showed me how to live, made me stronger. So that's what I appreciate, I appreciate the universe. Yeah, no, that's lovely. 
I have to tell you, I completely forgot. The last couple of days I watched um, Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> not even related to your show I completely I wasn't even thinking about it but you know but yeah there's magic yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah so I love um you know tell us about this work you know Wonder Woman is empowered and you know I love the background and you know how you're playing with like the different techniques and styles and you know yeah. going in and out of abstraction yeah, you know, I'm also, in a way, I'm a colorist, but I can do muted work too. This is very colorful. So I just wanted to show how a woman can be empowered and be colorful because I'm a colorful person. I invite different ideas to my life. I invite different, uh, I never, um, first of all, these colors shows that about my, my personality that I'm a colorful person, you know? And uh, also um, one of the things that this painting I started doing that uh, I was thinking about, you know what they showed in our life that uh, don't do that. Uh, they scared of, of everything. The, the fear that is the worst thing in life, they put it in our brain. And I started just declining the fear. And this, these colors shows how I decline the fear in my life. I love life. that. Yeah. Yeah. And as we go through, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to unmute and, you know, and go ahead and ask. Um, so tell us about, you know, about the series. I mean, I know we've talked a little bit about you're using animals and children and, um, like, are these, you know, taken from photos? Are they specific scenes or do they, you know, come from your imagination and they're just, you know, part of a story that you're weaving through about your life? Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, I mean, I used to be a um, realistic painter. So, and I've done a lot of figurative paintings and then I came up with kind of like a um, ab abstract figurative paintings. And as you see these, like these, they, these faces, they don't have any eyes or lips or something, but it shows that the, the mother is really connecting with, with her child. So I, I just created them myself. I just created them. I've seen a lot of artwork, but they are, they are hacked in my brain. So when I started painting, when I, when I started like the vision, vision that I had every night, about a new painting, then in the morning, I would put that vision on the canvas. Um, I mean, it, it would come from my mind, from what I felt or from my heart, not about uh, just uh, seeing something and copying is because it didn't work for me to copy anything, you know? These are all my characters. These are all coming from my heart. And do you use the same characters over and over again throughout your art throughout the series or are they all different? They are kind of different, but the ones, so these black and white uh, paintings that it, something it says, I don't know about like he's, she's abused or something. Again, that's what my connection of my problems that uh, I cl clicked it to the, uh, the words problem. So that's what it's showing this one. But about the, the, um, um, the colorful paintings, um, um, I don't think that I use, maybe some of them, they look like each other, but I never did that like, I didn't try to do the same face or the same figure for, for my other characters uh, in my new painting. Okay. And tell us, because interspersed throughout the show, um, you know, there is both color and black and white. You know, yeah. tell us about, you know, I mean, because you've talked about that you're a colorist. So, you know, but then why the black and white? Well, the black and white, because as I mentioned, I couldn't, I think I, I wrote something here. As I mentioned that I felt when I, when I came here and I was, um, studying a little bit of, about the sexism, 
um, and uh, prejudice, then, then I found out, well, I lived, I used to live, I came first to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I used to see women that they are battered women, even in, in there. And the, uh, that surprised me first because I always when I, I had that, that uh, idealistic thought about America that every, all women are free. They are, they are all powerful. They are all empowered. But then, then I started seeing that, okay, these, these things actually um, exist in all over the world. Uh, we women, no matter how much money we make, no matter how we feel smart or powerful, it's always we are, I'm so sorry for a listener. <laughs> I have to call you guys back. I'm in the middle okay. of something. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah, that was my grandbaby daughter. She's eight months, eight months more, <laughs> eight month uh, age, and usually they FaceTime with me every other day. But um, anyway, so I started connecting my problems to the problems of the world, and then came up. How about show how? how women are can be desperate and be abused and i talk about me too movement and as we talked about yesterday or the day before in our meeting about um, jeffrey Epps, um, jeffrey epstein or uh, bill cosby or uh, um, harvey weinstein so these are all powerful men who use their power to abuse women so, um, and I'm not saying just, just in the world. So I look at um, Afghanistan women, the girls who are just 10 years old, they are getting, they're, they're get, the, the father make them marry to a 50, 80 years old man and they get, they, they want to strike. So they go to the back backyard and they put them on fire. So these are different things that we hear and we see, and these are representation, these black and white paintings are representation of women are getting abused. And we need to do something about it. Yeah, you have, as we scroll through, I know there's the, um, and I think I shared it, there's the diptych that you have. Yes. You know, which is really powerful. Yes. And we'll look that, at that in a minute. Okay. And so tell us about the unicorn. Yeah, yeah, unicorn again is a symbol of magic and miracle that happens in our life. For me, this is dreamy, this is fantasy, this, but still um, I've, I look at the f uh, unicorn as a innocent, uh, in, in, innocent fantasy figure or animal that uh, I relate to because uh, maybe that unicorn uh, helped me to help me to uh, to uh, just take care of my my obstacle bring, brought that magic to my life brought that uh, that uh, miracle to my life because i i strongly believe in magic and miracles and what's unicorn unicorn also is a magic to me yeah definitely definitely and then I know this is your newer work. So yes, I, I yeah. I started doing some um, because th those paintings are very um, literally literally done, but um, I tried to do something that is showing the abstraction of a woman, but still the power power uh, the empowerment of a woman. So then I started doing some abstraction and these are not um, explained. I think I have to explain them um, though the other paintings are more, more uh, explained for, for viewers. Well, the titles definitely help carry the story. Yes, exactly. Don, is that what you're gonna say? Or you're muted, so I didn't know. <laughs> Oh, you're okay. muted, so we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, uh, the title is fabulous, and it really <laughs> adds so much to the painting. And 
um, I'm looking at, I think your use of titles is really wonderful. That's Thank all. You. Yeah, as I mentioned, I have, uh, I have saved some of these uh, titles and when I finish a painting, I go back to my notes and I look at the which one suitable for this painting. And all of them are, is about women empowerment. But yeah. thank you, John. <laughs> I like how, I mean, through the show, um, you know, it's laid out where, you know, you have like, there's the narrative and then the abstraction and then black and white. It's kind of mixed up, you know, to like help you pause, you know, uh -huh. a little bit and think as you're scrolling through. Okay, uh, great, because, you know, as you, you mentioned first, I, I, I've been painting everything, abstraction, figurative, uh, landscape, uh, uh, you know, uh, or portrait. So, so I, I mean, I, I can do everything. It's not just I'm, I'm stuck in one subject matter. But then in this, uh, in this project, um, it allowed me to paint freely whatever it came to my mind or so that that really helped me yeah and you know I mean just hearing you talk about your work and I mean I love that that you don't even know what's gonna you know what you'll think about at night but whatever comes to your mind you'll just paint and yeah exactly so this one is from from the uh previous one is completely different even on the painting it's very loose you know yeah. the other one is not it's not that loose but this one is very loose I just felt I want to do something that not too uh, just a very um, um, painterly um, stroke I want to use I was the, the strokes that to be seen and I want to say that this woman says like like <laughs> the title says every um, every day since I left you, I look at the world differently or yeah. the, the world is different, is brand new for me. So yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. And then of course, this one is self-explanatory, me too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just about, again, all those things that happen still in the world, unfortunately, to women. Did you paint this on wood or is this the actual the like wood. background? No, no, that's a wood actually. Okay. I oh, you paint this on canvas, but this one was on wood, yes. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And there's, you know, just these heartwarming pieces too. <laughs> yeah, because as I mentioned, I have four boys. These are two, uh, I feel that, you know, when I, when I went to sleep and I was visualizing or doing it, like a vision would come to my mind. I said, what about talking about my boys? They were when, because the two of my boys, the, the, um, the youngest one, I, I was away from them for seven years. And this brings back uh, just tears to my eyes that I couldn't, but I had to work on my green card. I had to work on my citizenship and get them green card. They are all, they are here right now. One of them, the, the little one actually is, a, is a, he's an attorney um, and has that little baby girl. And the, uh, the taller one is an executive producer for, um, for a TV show and director so but at the time when I look at them I started painting them and I said these are my two little boys that I didn't see them from for seven years I left them when I was eight years when they were um, eight and ten actually uh, younger maybe seven and a half and nine and then I brought them here when they were 14 or 15 years old yeah wow and another one of your abstracts. Yeah, this is another abstract that, um, again, I'm talking about uh, about um, it, it, it's it, it, it's still about the woman empowerment. I don't know. I don't remember the name. Yeah. Never apologize for being a powerful woman. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And I love this. Are you painting like on an older painting or is this, this is actually, this was actually, yeah, it, it, it was an older painting that it had a lot of um, uh, surfaces and a lot of uh, 
textures. And then I painted over it because um, the, to me, the painting wasn't that successful, but I used a lot of uh, paint. And I think I used also a molding paste on that too, on the background. So then I just changed it. Um, so that shows that, that, but it makes it more three-dimensional, I guess, or kind of like, you know, shows the textures that how it's texturized. Definitely, definitely. More black and white. Yeah, this is one of my favorites uh, about, I mean, with the, uh, all my black and white paintings. This is just, uh, I think she's, she says that she's confused or something. I think that's the, uh, yeah. Soul. yeah, tortured soul. Because to tell you the truth, I was a tortured soul for a long time because I was hiding uh, things that I, I should not be uh, hiding. I should be just very openly saying, this is my idea. I want this, but I couldn't, you know? So yeah, myself too. <laughs> <laughs> I always love this piece too. Yeah. And the title goes with it, I think. Yeah, my life flies away like a dream. Why should I stay behind? Yeah, so that was me actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that why should I stay behind? I have to do something about it. Nobody's gonna help me. I have to help myself, you know? Yep, yep. Another great black and white. I like this maybe one of my favorites of the black and whites. Oh really? Yeah, this is uh, this is also the the title is very confidence is the sexist accessory. That's right. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they are not smiling, but still. Yeah. Yeah. They show they're they're powerful. She shows I I have power. You know. Exactly. And this is another one that's really textured. Yes, that was also done uh, on another uh, painting that uh, I use a lot of texture like a molding paste or something before and then it was an abstract painting and I decided to, it wasn't that successful so I decided to paint over it with my project. Yeah. Yeah, this is the powerful diptych. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, show how maybe he was. Uh, she she was uh, she was abused, and that's what her face is. Because when you're abused, you we might not see on the surface, but inside us is that uh, crumbled and just so. You know, inside we are crying. So. When, when she tried to change her life, then she has smooth face. That was my uh, interpretation for this uh, for translation of these two. Yeah. Yeah, it's really powerful. I also like this one. I love the way you've layered, you know, you have all the color underneath and then you layer that like white, that whitish, you know, on top. Yes. Yes, that one also, most of them are some, this one, most of them are done in a, on another painting that um, it was very colorful and I decided to show how my son is, is uh, cuddling me and there is a, like a little um, cat over here and a little bird over here uh, with, the, uh, with the unicorn again or whatever, is either a unicorn or something that like, heavenly feature, he heavenly, heavenly animal maybe. Yeah. And this is another one that I painted over, uh, another painting that was very colorful, but then I use a lot of birds as you can see. Yeah, what do birds symbolize for you? innocence and uh, spirituality and happiness yeah to me. and peace you know yes, peace, yeah. exactly yeah especially because it looks like you're using doves 
you know there's yes. some summer doves yes doves are just the the they, they have a said for me they pre, present love love to one another or you that's what i relate to them so much yeah yeah definitely just and this one i'm showing for my four boys here uh, and that's what i'm opening my wings to save them and save myself these are also very emotional for me. Some of these paintings are very emotional for me. I can imagine. It is in her inner spiritual self. She finds the strength she needs. Yeah, really powerful, Shala. Thank you. Yeah, I did. I did find strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another colorist one and yeah. Some birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. Is that's one of one of them is me. I'm I'm that bird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Maybe it's me and my dad that I recommend let her go because you know my dad was was flamboyant, but he was she, he was a uh, old fashioned. Um, like very uh, one of the things that I had because uh, when I now maybe again it's it's not too private for me but maybe maybe a little detail of my work because I met my ex-husband in uh, at university that I was going and um, he, his uh, major was architecture mine was uh, English literature we just became boyfriend girlfriend and I wanted to marry him and my parents sent me to England to stay away from him. For a year, that's what I studied, uh, um, this studied there in, in Eastbourne, England. Uh, and then uh, when I came back, I, they said, uh, I, I said, I still, I want him. Uh, and then we married. And then I knew after six months that my parents were right. Then I went to my father, he said, I am not gonna, uh, you you go you I did everything to stay to make you stay away from this guy but you didn't listen to me so go ahead and live with him and die with him so I when I came here first I had that that kind of animosity towards my father or I was mad at him and I was I I was mad at him and I hated him for a while for um, not letting me live my life. I'm, everybody makes mistakes. And he was, as, as a, I was a young adult, but he was an older adult. We all make mistakes, even if you are older. So give me a chance, he didn't. So um, I meditated every day to find peace with him. And I love him because they, they raised us. My parents raised, raised me and my twin sister who lives in Canada. They raised that we very responsible. That's what I could find my life here and, and make my life just a little happy and bring my boys here because of my parents. But I mean, um, that was maybe my father that I say, let, let her let her be free or something. Let her fly away. Like, let me fly away. Yeah. Wow. What a story. Thank yeah. you. Very... Sorry, I just go too detail. I should have yeah. probably, but these are the things that when I started painting, these came, these uh, came to my mind, you know? Yeah. I mean, these are, you know, it's, it's part of the story. It's part of who you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and this, I mean, just using the texture, you know, as like as the scars. Yes, that's showing that uh, that's abuse and uh, vis visible scars, uh, that's abuse. Actually, this yeah. painting I painted uh, uh, not for this project, but I feel that it, it goes with this project. Yeah, yeah. It goes with this project. Definitely another one of your abstracts and you can see like the you know kind of the outlines of birds yes exactly there's one bird there yeah exactly yeah, yeah more beautiful 
you know, black and whites. And I mean, there's so many, you know, I love how you're concealing and yet showing, you know, the woman. Yeah. You know, I mean, that means so much right there. Yeah. I, I like the face that is not happy, but is not sad, but is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, a mother connecting to her boy or her child. Yeah. I think that was the last one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and open it up. Does anybody have questions, comments, um, anything? You know, feel free to unmute. Hey, Shala. Eric here. Hi. Uh, congrats on the show and everything. Thank you. I'm, cu I'm curious, uh, you know, with the history of embroidery, textiles, etc., and Persian arts, do you feel like you carry through some of that history in your art making? It's some of it I feel like I can pick out in some of the uh, patterns and such of your work, but I wanted to hear your thoughts on uh, that yeah, um influence. Actually, you know what? That's another thing that um, I I never studied uh, Persian art, and uh, maybe that influenced me uh, unconsciously. I don't know because you can see it. I don't see it myself. I see my paintings all very done like like uh, Western paintings. But if you see that, mm -hmm. well, because you know. Uh, maybe I do it unconsciously, but thank you for bringing it out. Right, right. Thank you. Great question. John. Um, Christine, I just want to say thank you. I've known Sh Shala for about three years now, I think. Yes. It is so wonderful to have the opportunity to know her in a deeper and better way. And I, I really appreciate you providing this opportunity. Thank you so very much. And I really enjoyed listening to Shala and hearing about the work, which um, I really, personally, I really love the black and white work with the dripping, with the, the you know, watercolor. Um, it, uh, to me, that's really incredibly moving. Thank you so much. And yes, I need to thank Christine too for giving me this opportunity to talk about my work. Well, I mean, you know, seeing this series and, you know, working with you over the last few months, I wanted it to get out there. You know, I wanted you to be able to tell your story and um, yeah, because I mean, it's so, it's, you know, like we said, it's personal, but it's also universal. And, you know, I feel like so many people can relate to it, you know, wherever you're from. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Debbie. Oh, you're muted, Debbie. Shala, the work is beautiful and you're beautiful. Your story is amazing. I'm sure there's a whole lot more to it, but it's amazing what you had to go through and that you're still a <clears throat> loving, optimistic person. So. Thank my hats so off to you. And um, the interesting thing about, I'm a lot of breath, sorry, hiking up the hill. Um, you know, the way you blend the colors, it kind of reminds me of smoke almost, but it's also kind of reminds me of the way our thoughts are kind of like a mishmash when we're half awake and half asleep, you know, in between. And these things right. just sort of blend together. And, and you, I think you have um, made a very good visual representation of that. Oh, well, thank you so very much. Thank you. I really enjoyed enjoyed everything, the, the work and you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me and being here with sh listening to my story and looking at my art. My pleasure. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, if do you have any last thoughts or anything you want to share, Shala? Um, I, no, I just felt that I shared more than I wanted to because I got emotional at talking about my father and talking about, you know, but, uh, but it was great. Uh, I'm, I'm emotional right now, but it was great. And 
I, as I mentioned, uh, Christine, to you, and I want everybody to hear that, that um, I, my, my, my boys uh, brought their father here a year and a half ago, and I started having all those um, bad feelings and just getting also couldn't sleep. I had nightmares. And uh, doing this project actually helped me to relax and to forget about and forgive them, you know? Uh, I was watching a movie last night. If you guys have Netflix watch, it's beautiful. It's called Shack, and it talks about forgiveness mm -hmm. and how I could uh, uh, forgive them for what uh, they, they did to me, you know. Um, but this project helped me with that, really, and I That's appreciate lovely. that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Well, Shala also has a solo show coming up at TAG in March. So keep an eye out for that. And it's actually going to be of the black and white work. Yeah, the ones yeah. that John likes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you'll be able to see them in person. Yeah. And she has many more than we shared here. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again, Shala. It, you thank know, you so much. Thank you're you. Welcome. Thank you for hosting you and you know, hearing your story. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you for audience to listen to my art and uh, I could share some of my uh, passion and some of my worriness or, or achievement, you know? Yeah, well, you can definitely hear the passion and see the passion in everything you do. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. All righty, everybody have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.